All right, hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. I'm here with Pete Jones from Allen's Arsenal. How you doing, Pete? Good, Carl. Pete's an old 5th Special Forces Group buddy of mine. Um, you guys know my background. Maybe some of y'all don't. Uh, me and Pete, we did two, three, four, pretty well forever in Special Forces. And uh, most of my background was with a special mission unit as a sniper providing overwatch for a direct action or basically the assault force. So, and even before that, most of my time, even in the regular army was behind a sniper rifle. So I've always lived and breathed precision rifles. Now I'm very big on for combat ops. I want a semi-automatic gun, uh, you know, uh, because I've got to clear that building to get to that third story loophole. I'm not in combat anymore, so I just want something to get out at the range and play and be accurate and actually hit what I'm shooting at. And uh, Pete started talking to me about this new bolt action gun he's got that's not going to set you back millions of dollars, but it's definitely not entry level nothing. This thing is ready to compete right out of the, right out of the box. Yes. All right. Now this one is yours. This is not right out of the box. Correct. This Tell me a little is, bit about it. So, well first, let's talk about the, the rifle itself and then at the end we'll talk about the things we've added here. And really, with this Solus rifle, the biggest thing about it is that there's so much going on here from one end to the other that I just sort of want to break it down. Uh, but I will say that this one, without the scope, without the muzzle brake, uh, trigger bipod this is the solace uh competition model it is in 6.5 creedmoor uh you can see it has the the rail and we'll talk a little bit more about that then you have the bravo model that has the krg stock it has mm -hmm. the same sedona style uh profile barrel this one does from there you also have the hunter model that has the carbon fiber stock and a fluted barrel that one being the lightest of all of them that one's just under nine pounds this one being the heaviest without all the added extra stuff here this is about ten and a half pounds uh out of the box okay 308 6.5 creedmoor and six millimeter creed correct so yep. far those are the three calibers and uh we'll talk more about how you can interchange calibers as well uh, as we go talking about the actions uh, with this one right here we'll talk about the chassis itself this is their competition chassis, okay? It comes in either a seven and a half, 15 or 17 inch length up at the front. You do see it has the M-lock, the three, six and nine all around, okay? It also has the Arca S rail at yeah. the bottom. So if you got one of those new fancy tripods with the lock and adapter and all that kind of stuff. They've even got the shooting bags that have the yes, rail on absolutely. the top of it. Also with this one, you can it already preset for uh, if you want to do an MVG thing on the top or some kind of spigot at the bottom. You see the little four holes right there, okay? So that's the front part of it. Going back to the rear, you'll notice, excuse me, Carl. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and just remove the magazine here. This one is a Magpul AICS. Uh, and you can use a different one, and we'll talk about that with the action. This one's by Magpul, uh, so it's not an actual metal AI magazine. You, there is a set screw in there if you need to make an adjustment in case you get a little bit of yeah. play in the magazine. Some of the mags, depending on the type brand, there's a little more play. You'll have problems with them uh, extracting that next bullet from the mag. That's awesome that it's got the adjustment. That's cool. The mag release itself is ambidextrous on both sides. You notice here on the grip, this is actually something that was shown to me when I went to sniper school back at Bragg, they didn't have what you see here, a thumb rest that is actually movable. But what I was shown is you take your thumb, bring it around to whatever side shooter you are. In this case, I'm a right-handed shooter. So that way, when you pull your trigger finger back, you're not moving the gun. You're not pulling that shot. You'll see most people shoot with their hand wrapped all the way around the gun. But if you watch your precision rifle series, guys, a lot of times they'll bring that thumb, instead of shooting like this, they'll bring that thumb around to the side. And the reason why they're doing that is you're a mammal. So your entire life you have been picking things up with your entire hand. 
So it's very, very hard for you to move one finger without the rest of your fingers moving, including your thumb. So as a mammal, when I go to squeeze my trigger finger, my thumb is moving at the same time. That's gonna move the gun left or right. So instead they'll run their thumb out to the side and now it does not matter that my whole hand moves. It's only that trigger finger that's touching. All right. Okay, so moving back towards the actual stock itself. Adjustable if for If you want to make it adjustable, yep. really you just got to unwind it, push it in, and then you see how easy it is to move up and down, in and out, okay? From and then you lock also. them back down so they don't move. It has a nice little bag rest. You see the several spots all along the chassis if you want to do a for sling. Rail slings and stuff. For right that there. kind of stuff. Uh, and then also right here in the center section, it currently comes like this where it's fixed but the arrow of precision is supposed to be coming out with a link, so that way you can take the stock, fold it over, mm. to put it in a bag or something like All that. Right, so they actually know they're gonna do it yes, down the road until so they put it the, ah, Yes, they're absolutely forethought. planning Okay, that that's fair. Already. That's fair. So they really have put a lot of thought on this one. Uh, the other chassis, and when I say chassis, I mean because you can buy this as a complete rifle or you can buy just a separate pieces parts. In this case, we're talking about the chassis. The KRG one, uh, Kinetic Research Group, which is actually another set of guys uh, out of 5th Special Forces Group who started a company about 10 plus years ago. Uh, it has an adjustable height and, and length and all that. You can look it up online. And then the other one that they have is the carbon fiber stock, which is on the hunter rifle that I was talking about. That one is the lightest. So that way someone yeah. wanting to go out for Before we get into game. all of Pete's personal changes on this, because Pete did a lot of love on this gun right here. We're going to take a break real quick and let uh, YouTube hit you right in the face with a commercial. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, Pete. Some guys like to build their own stuff. They like to just buy the action. I see that on Instagram and everything. Uh, you've got just the action. Is that just a show or do they sell just the action also? So if I didn't, uh, if I wasn't clear about it before, like I said, you can either buy this as a complete rifle or you can buy it in different pieces, parts. And that is truly one of the big benefits of this, the Solus on the forethought that they had when they did it. You got companies out there and it doesn't matter whose name I drop. Normally they want to sell you either just the action if they sell it itself or they want to sell you just the rifle and that's the way you get it. And if you want to change anything, you got to buy somebody else's product mm -hmm. to yeah. do that. To where with Aero, you can buy this. And as you see, I did change things and we'll talk about that later on. But you can buy just a chassis like I previously stated or just the action. Uh, or you can also buy the action with a barrel pre-installed Okay. Because to put the barrel on, you need a, their proprietary action wrench, which means it's an, another item that you got to buy. So, okay. But in this case, I got the the action here. We'll we'll talk about this. Okay. This one, as you see, is a one piece uh, action. It, it has a integrated, okay, twenty MOA rail. Uh, that was my next question: Does it have any slant uh, yeah. tilt already in it? So twenty MOA. And the uh, nice thing about that, okay, is the it's one less thing that you have to worry about coming loose. Like in this case with the scope, if you don't have Loctite or put it at the right torque, you got the rail to come loose. You have the scope mount to come loose. You're just adding, you're taking away one of the variables of something coming And we act, we act like we're never going to see that problem. It's never going to happen. But we had it happen on an M24. Uh, back my old unit, all of a sudden the zero was off and we're, we checked, we torqued the scope rings, but it turns out it was the actual scope base onto the action. So it, it's good to see that this is milled right in. All right, that's cool. The recoil lug itself is yep. also integrated into it, okay? And then as you notice, I mean, it's a pretty nice tight fit. Yep. This is not a $2,000, $3,000 action by any means. Where you hold it and it just slides and it just, and in And you put like it on glass. the 10 yeah. degree and it, I mean, it you gotta right see in. right there yeah. and I gotta play with it. And granted, this is dry, there's no oil on it. I'm probably at a 40 degree, but again, this is about $900 or less, depending on yeah. where you get it. Okay. To where those kind of actions that Carl's talking about, where you just barely tip it like this and it's like butter, you're spending two, $3,000 just on this one item. For that one part of the gun, right? Again, Arrow's not trying to sell you a Ferrari. They're trying to sell you something at a decent price that most people can get and you end up with a 
good product at the end of the day. So anyways, removing the bolt, well, let me back it up. So lifting it up, it is a 60 degree lift to cock. That means it cocks it as you lift it up, it comes out. Then to take it out, I just turn it over and then it comes right out. Looking at the bolt itself, okay, you notice it's a tri-lug. It comes in a uh, 478 or 540, okay, that's for your larger sizes, your magnum sizes. Uh, and it is removable so you can interchange it. Okay, they have the same coating on here as they have on the action itself, all right. Uh, you have the little cocked indicator at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then to take it out, all you simply have to do is push in, do about a quarter turn, you can pull the firing pin out. If you need to clean it up, put it right back. And that's the bolt itself. Uh, again, if I didn't say it, it is removable and interchangeable. Yep. You can't get them both currently from Aero Precision. And you said uh, it's threaded for a Savage or yes. so, a uh, Orion? Yeah, so with this, for barrels, you can use it either use the Savage threaded or the Orion uh, pre-fit barrels, like most of your proof yeah, barrels yeah. or yeah, Orion. Yeah. I do want to say on the magazine where I talked about this is a AICS or an AICW, this is an AICS to where the AICW is more of a double stack style yeah, magazine. Yeah. This has already come out, cut out for it. So if you don't use one of Aero Precision's chassis, because all of theirs are set up for the AICS, this. and you get somebody else's chassis, because you want the AICW, you can do that. Okay. It's already set up to where you can do that either way. And then even the injection uh, area is larger, is enlarged to be able to allow the magnum rounds to come out. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. And I believe that is everything on the bolt itself. Nice. Okay. Oh, and it does come with its own wrench right there. Oh. Um. Own wrench. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you, you set your, your torque wrench socket right there, your golden. All right. Uh, I want to talk, let's talk trigger, some of the other cool stuff. But before we do, uh, we're going to do another commercial real quick. Thunder Mass. All right. Um, I love the trigger and I love to let's start with all the different things you've changed on this gun because I'm sure they want to know where you want to start. Okay, so we'll start with the trigger. Uh, the trigger I do have in this is a Timney trigger. Everyone's got a preference on triggers. Personally, I'm a big believe I'm a big fan of Timney. He loves his uh, Timney triggers. And not only that, but they're an American made trigger. It's yeah. uh, it's one of those this this gun actually comes with trigger tech. Uh, they're made in Canada. Anyways, going from there. This one here is the 520. It's Point a half three. pound. 0.3.5 pound. Half pound trigger. You can adjust a shoe forward, backward, up and down, side to side, okay? You it's don't want that on a sniper rifle. It, that a, thing is it's light. It's a competition yes, trigger. Yes, okay? 100%. Another one that's out by Timney, and I just brought this to show a quick install. Uh, this is the 510. This is probably their most common one for a Remington 700 style action. Uh, and then, so with this, one thing I didn't point out about the action itself, it being a 700 short action, is that it has a hanger. To, so what you do is you would set that up in there, put the pins in place, and then obviously with the bolt out, you would lock it in there, and then you have the little, screw, little screw to okay. put the little screw in place. Okay. So anyways, with this rifle here, also what I've done, this is from VG6. It's another uh, sister company of Arrow. And as you notice, really all it is is a comp. And instead of just running a thread protector, you just simply hand tighten it. Okay. You wind it all the way on. Mm -hmm. And when you want to lock it in place, you just lock that. I was going to say, down. how do you time it? You that's, literally... that's all you do. Like, okay. I mean, put it where you, it, uh, it is, as far as you want. And then it's, it's a, uh, you just an run it all the way down. Washer, basically. It doesn't matter if you have it letters up or letters down, then time that's it. it. And all you have to do, okay. they say is just, you can hand tighten it. But anyways, from there, the reason why I started taking it off, I also brought to play with, yeah. The new, or one of the new suppressors from Aero Precision. This is the Lahar L. Lahar. Lahar. Lamar? Lahar. 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 Can you take them apart to clean it? Somewhat. 
Yeah, I'm seeing because the baffles are welded yep. in. Okay. But you can't change the end cap. Yeah, you can't for change so you it. put it on different guns, different Correct. calibers. Yep. Okay. Um, and in another video, I'll talk more about this suppressor and other ones as well. This um, is that the set length, or they have different choices? They do have different. Uh, they this is the long one uh, right here. Shows them on the box. They're standard thirty, and then they do have the K model. Okay. But this being a larger caliber, yeah, I yeah, figure yeah. if you're going to play with it, why not bring the one that yeah, will? Yeah, of course, be most efficient. The bipods on this actually are by Carl. Or yeah, um, the, the bipod guys, that's the uh, CAL, K A L, stands for Cant and Lock. In other words, you can uh, loosen it up and it allows you to cant the bipod back and forth. It's made by BT Industries. You can still go out to 45 degrees with it if, uh, if you need to get lower. All right. Um, again, you can bring them back in the other direction also. Um, I actually helped develop the original Atlas bipod overseas. I've got like one of every generation, every improvement that he did. Um, my favorite one would pan and tilt. This one specifically does not have pan. And the reason for that is if your bipod legs are panned to the side for shooting long distance, it literally will move the, the front of the gun left or right. So if you're doing precision rifle, go with a one that just goes up and down, does not pan left or right. And that's why for Pete's uh, Accurized rifle here, we went with, uh, it's called the Cal, can't and lock, you just lock it down, very, very sexy. Uh, b and Industries out of Kansas City. I'm sorry, Wichita, Kansas, Wichita. And right. then there is the scope that was actually from Carl uh, that's put on with an Aero Precision scope mount. Yep, I uh, used his scope mount and uh, Aero Precision. This is by Primary Arms. This is their GLX. You can't say gold series because Leopold patented the term, I guess. GLX, in other words, this is not Chinese glass here. This is made in the Philippines. It actually has the Apollo reticle in it. What that is, that is a... Be a bullet drop compensating reticle geared for 120 grain uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. When Pete told me he was bringing me a 6.5 Creedmoor, I was like, you know, I got just the scope to pull off the shelf. So uh, it's got illuminated reticle. It's, um, I want to say, 5 to fi uh, five to 16. I'm sorry, uh, 3 to 16, 4 to 16. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a good scope. Uh, you're not having to learn mill grids and everything uh, match number for the distance on your laser range finder. All right, let's head out to the range. Let's see how this puppy groups at distance. Uh, but before we do that, let's squeeze in one more commercial. Here we are, Grandma. Eight o'clock in the X. Four o'clock in the X. Six o'clock in the X. Center mass of the X. Center of the group. All right. In the X, 9 o'clock. In the X, 6 o'clock. In the X, 5 o'clock. 3 o'clock in the X. Center of the X, like center center of the X. One o'clock, ten ring. One o'clock, ten ring. All right, we got our three groups. Hopefully they do better with the suppressor. All right, so our nearest berm, 200 meters, uh, so we decided to do grouping drills. And um, 
it turns out being, and this is why we say, you know, some guns like certain ammo better than others, because it shot exactly opposite of what I thought it would be. I expected the cheaper American Eagle to group the worst, and I expected the G9 uh, Super Match to group the best. And we had the exact opposite. Um, the American Eagle, uh, American Eagle, look at that group, guys. Right, that's, uh, that is a beautiful shot group. That, and that is the ammo that we zeroed the gun with. It's the ammo that Pete shot the most with. But I expected him that when we switched to the uh, the Barnes Vortex ammo, that is still good hunting ammo. We, uh, I expected maybe a shift up and down, but I did not expect a shift left, uh, shift left to right. If you look at the width of Pete's shot group here, it's basically the same width of that shot group. Um, shift wise, I, you know, I, I, I really can't explain it. Um, but what shocked me was the G9 and my, my P3 65 loves this G9 ammo up here. And, uh, but if you look at that shot group, guys, that's, that's over, that's well over one MOA. That's not, uh, not what I was hoping for. I, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a big shot group, guys. But, uh, down here, Pete's got, and the cool part is it's not the most expensive ammo. So Pete, that's what I would be running in yeah. this gun because it likes it. The other thing, guys, is understand Pete's gun is still new. So you've got to follow that proper break-in procedure. And a lot of guns will... Uh, actually start to group uh, tighter once the barrels have been pro uh, properly broken in. There's one other thing that will affect the size of that shot group and that is with a suppressor or without a suppressor. So we're going to go back and we're going to shoot these same three types of ammo. I'm going to give you clean targets. We'll get you a little coffee to settle your nerves down a little bit. And um, we are going to reshoot it but with the suppressor. Aero precision suppressor. Yes, yep. the Lahar. Yep. Uh, let's go check it out. Here we go. All right, it is, uh, it's heating up out here, but our wind's also picking up. I know you're not seeing it here with this berm, but this, my target's not really in the ground because I wanted it level because I know I got all these anal people on the internet that were bits that my target wasn't level. Um, but what I did was I uh, kind of set Pete up for failure because as a, we had no wind when we started. As it's moving, anyways, um, so you'll see the shot groups get wide because the target's doing this. Uh, American Eagle down bottom. Again, the tightest shot group. Uh, we have a, we've got a two MOA suppressor shift. Okay, no big deal so long as it's repeatable. My old SR25 Mark 11, when I put the suppressor on it, I knew to dope my scope for my suppressor shift. When I put my night sight on, my PVS-22, I knew I had to put dope on the gun for my night sight. Uh, as long as it's repeatable, not a big deal. So um, American Eagle still grouping the best. The next one, Barnes, um, the uh, Vortex ammo. Shot groups opened up a lot, uh, but notice it's still, these four rounds are still two MOAs low. So it's the same shift for suppressor, right? 
Uh, Pete did call that he pulled that one high. So if you take that one out and then you look at my targets swaying back and forth a little bit, that's, that's a good group. So we're gonna say the Barnes actually did better with the suppressor. Now the, the G9 Super Match, Super Match, um, same thing, two inches low. Uh, but that shot group's opened up a little bit, swaying left and right. I, I've always had good experience with this gun, uh, with this ammo. Um, we've got it on paper. Paper doesn't lie. That's why we like paper. But you'll see, putting the suppressor on did not really make this gun any more accurate or less accurate. You you usually get a suppressor shift. A lot of times, if you're shooting your suppressor to the point to where the barrel's getting hot. Uh, you'll get what's called suppressor droop. Your, your shot groups will actually start running low. If you let the gun cool, it comes right back to zero again. We haven't been shooting that many rounds, not a big deal. Let's take it you, up. You to, see how much it's moving while we're oh, still I, I, I know, talking. I know, Pete, I know. I, I set you up for failure, I'm sorry. All right, uh, we're gonna take it to the unknown distance range where we've got steel out to 1400 meters and now uh, we're going to go play with this stuff. Just off the left side. Send the mask. Yeah. All right. Uh, left edge. There we go. Get it again. Remember that Barnes always misses to the right. Well, now I'm on the American Eagle. All right. So let's try just right of center. Ready. All right, hey guys, so this is the Aero Precision Solus, and uh, th that's as much bang for the buck as I think you're gonna find. You saw it with all the different kinds of ammo, some great, uh, some groups better than others, some with a can better than others. Uh, but decent uh, entry, if you're a new guy wanting to get into Precision Rifle Series, or you just wanna drive tacks out in the backyard. Uh, Pete, I think you got a solid gun right here. Thanks for bringing it out. Thanks for having me. You guys, you got questions, or if you're interested in getting these, understand you don't have to go anywhere else. You can go straight to Allen's Arsenal online, right? Allen'sArsenal.com. Yep. Yep. That's Pete, old uh, Green Beret, gonna steer you right. That's his personal gun store, Allen. Why Allen? Because A comes before Pete when you do alphabetical on Google. Smart boy, smart Middle boy. Name. Middle name. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff guys leave the comments and questions below and I, if you need anything gun wise do what i do i go to p jones at allen's arsenal y'all take care and shoot straight if you like this video make sure to like comment and subscribe also make sure you follow us on facebook instagram and twitter so you don't miss out on anything